In this video, we're just going to get a little bit more practice graphing relations. We saw a little bit of this in a previous video. But here's the idea. I'm going to define a set A, and I'm going to define a relation R on A as follows. So I'm going to say two elements of A, X and Y, are related if X minus Y is divisible by 2. Now, in case you're interested, this is another common way this is written. So if we want to draw the directed graph representing this relation, one thing to keep in mind, the order which is x and which is y in this subtraction is important. It may not actually matter in this particular problem, but it will matter in other problems. So um, since the both x and y are going to be elements of a, we can say this is a relation over a, and so we can graph it by drawing the as vertices the elements of A, and then I can go through and for each vertex determine which other vertices or elements it's related to. So for 3, 3 minus 4, uh, let's do 3 minus 3 is 0, and 0 is divisible by 2. So I have a self loop. And again, the reason is 3 minus 3 is divisible by 2. Now, 3 minus 4, that's going to give me negative 1. That's not divisible by 2, so I have no arrow there. 3 minus 5 is going to be negative 2, which is divisible by 2, because this is equal to negative 1 times 2, and negative 1 is an integer, so we have an arrow from 3 to 5. And I can just keep going through this. 3 minus 6 is 3, not divisible by 2 minus 3. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Now that is divisible by 2. And 3 minus 8 is negative 5, and that's not divisible by 2. So the idea is you just want to go through this and figure out what elements are related to others. Now I'm going to give you a minute. I'd like you to try to finish this graph and then um, and then continue. You can pause the video and then continue the, the video and I'll go through it quickly. Now each of these elements, if you subtract it from itself, is going to give you zero. So all of these have loops to themselves. And then notice uh, 4 is going to point to 6 and to 8 and that each element is also going to point back to itself. 6 minus 8 is negative 2, so we have an arrow there. 7 minus 5 is 2, so we've got an arrow there. And now notice 7 minus 5 is 2, and 5 minus 7 is going to be negative 2. And that's, so each one of these that we have an arrow going one way, we can also oops, create an arrow going back the other way. gives kind of a messy graph. So there we are. Now I always get this question, so I'm going to answer it now. If you want to do a single line with an arrowhead on each end to denote a relation that goes both ways, I'm okay with that. But I'm not okay with you just having a line. Right, because I don't know if you mean that it should be one direction and you didn't draw it that way, or if it should be two, it's not clear. So if you're going to do just a line, you do need to put arrowheads on both sides. So pause the video and take a few minutes to try to do this one. Okay, so here, same idea. Um, we have this set A. Now A has changed. It has different elements in it. And what we're saying is that two elements, x and y, are related if and only if they're divi the, the x minus y is divisible by 3. And again, there's two ways we can write that. Either way works. So this is one of those that the order of x and y is important. right? So this is not going to be the same as y minus x. Here, 2 minus 2 is 0. Remember, everything 
Zero is divisible by everything. So each of these is going to have a self loop. And then two minus three is going to be um, negative one, not divisible by three. Two minus four is going to be negative two, not divisible by three, and so on. And if you walk through two with each one of these, you're going to find uh, none of them work. Two is, in fact, an isolated vertex. However, three minus nine gives negative six, which is divisible by three. And similarly, nine minus three gives positive six, which is divisible by three. And similarly, nine and six and six and nine. So actually, I think the order doesn't happen to matter in this one, but it does matter in others, as I said. And come up here, and then here's the same thing right there. So this is gonna be the final relation. Okay, so now we're gonna define a relation over a set B of all three digit binary. I'm gonna change this, this is a typo, this should be strings. And there's another typo here, my goodness. This should be the relation S, not the relation R. Okay, so if we have the set B of all three digit binary strings, and we wanted to find a relation S such that two elements of B, two binary strings, um, are related if they have the same middle digits. So I'd like you to pause the video and try this one on, yourself, on your own. You're gonna have to draw out the graph yourself from scratch, and then, um, I'll go over it. So there's many ways of drawing this graph out. Drawing the vertices, you can put them any way you like. I think putting them in a circle like this is a little easier, but you could do them in a row just as easily. So now each, did each three digit binary string has the same middle element of itself. So, th so these all have self loops. This is not, not all relations have self loops, just the ones we've been doing. And then we can go through and make connections. I'm going to use these single air double headed arrows to connect elements that have the same center digit. So these all have zero as the center digit. And then these outer ones all have one. So here's one way to draw that.